Today I'm going to show you what's inside of an oil pump and how your engine's lubrication system works. This here is the oil pump. It's responsible for pressurizing the engine including the timing cover, the crankcase, as well as the cam cover at the top of the engine to ensure all of the components are lubricated properly. The oil pump is held in by five 10 millimeter bolts and then the oil pump. Now the oil pump is powered through the center here crankshaft's rotation. Now the oil will flow from the inlet here to the outlet over here. Now the oil pump is held together by these three Phillips screws. We then remove the bottom half of the oil pump. So with the pump to open up here you can see that the inlet side for the oil is here where it comes from the sump. It fills up this little chamber here before it slides under this ring going into the gears. Now the pump itself consists of an internal ring here as well as an external ring. The internal ring is turned clockwise by the crankshaft in this direction. As the pump is rotating we have the gap between the teeth here that are opening up and that creates a low pressure zone for the oil that's on the inlet side to get sucked in. Now these gaps between the teeth here are going to fill up with oil until it reaches the top here again where the teeth start to close. That creates a high pressure zone as it's squeezing the oil back out to the outlet tube and into the engine. Now if we pull this apart here we can see the internal gear and the external ring gear which has the internal teeth. Now if I open up this pressure regulator here, we've got this bolt here and we've got a spring and we've got a little plunger on the inside here. So how this works here is we've got this plunger that's always closed in this position and when the pressure builds up on the outlet side some of that oil will go over back to the return here and push the plunger back down returning some of that oil back into the inlet side which goes back to the sump. Now we're going to have a look at where the oil goes after it leaves the oil pump over here. Now normally there's a set amount of engine oil that sits inside of the oil sump while the engine is running and this would be mounted like this. If I remove the oil pan from the engine you can see that we have the oil pickup tube and inside the oil pickup tube there's a little screen that filters out large metal particles. Now I'm going to chop open this oil strainer to see what's inside. Well, there you have it, we've got a basic metal grate that prevents large particles from going into the oil pump. Now if you follow the hole that goes through the crankcase, it'll go to the inlet side of the oil pump. Once oil flow is created by the oil pump, it'll then flow into the engine here. The oil will then flow from the crankcase into the block. There's a gallery inside of here where it goes to the middle of the engine and then back to the crankcase where the oil filter is located. So once the oil exits through the outlet of the oil pump, it'll then travel through this channel up into the engine block and then come back around to the oil filter over here. So once the oil reaches here, it'll flow through the outside of the filter, get filtered out and then come through the middle here before it'll go out to the main bearing. Now I'm going to chop open the oil filter to see what's inside. Now this filter here is in pretty rough shape. You can see that there's actually some particles of sludge built up inside of there. Now if I tear open this filter here, you can see it's just a paper-like material. Now over here on the spring we've got this bypass valve and that's to allow oil to bypass the filter in case it's clogged so that the engine doesn't get starved from oil. So once the oil comes from the oil filter up here, it'll then go down into this oil galley into the engine block that runs from one side all the way to the other. Now inside each of the bearing surfaces there's a hole that's drilled slanted that goes down to that oil galley to feed oil from it to lubricate the crankshafts. Now the crankshaft, while the main bearings are lubricated, they also have this hole in them that allow oil to go inside the crankshaft itself. Now sometimes if your bearing surface is too worn out and the gap between it and the crankshaft is too big, too much oil will drip off, you're going to lose oil pressure and your engine will start to knock. Now you can see how the connecting rod bearings are lubricated through these holes here. If I take a wire and I juke it in, you can see that it runs in the direction of the first main bearing. So it's actually a hole drilled in this direction that'll allow oil to go from this bearing to the connecting rod over here. Now the connecting rod bearing itself will get lubricated by that oil and then the oil will also go through this little hole that's drilled on the side of the connecting rod and it will spray up into the cylinder walls lubricating the cylinder itself inside the engine block. Now that spray will also lubricate the bottom of the piston head where the bushing connects to the connecting rod. Now this last ring here on the piston is called the oil control ring and that will actually wipe off excess oil as the piston is going back down into the engine so it doesn't get burned on the combustion side of the piston. While the oil will lubricate the cylinder excess oil will drain into the piston back down into the sump. Now that main oil galley that runs along the length of the engine is blocked off by this steel ball here during manufacturing. It also branches off over here to this oil galley that goes up to the head. Now this hole here is where the oil goes into the head and these three holes here are where it drains back down into the sump. So this is the cylinder head. We have two camshafts here that have bearings as well as lobes that need to be lubricated. We've also got a variable timing gear here that operates with oil pressure that needs oil. On the bottom here we have the inlet where the oil goes into the head 
and over here we have the three drains where it drains back into the sump. Now as the oil enters the bottom of the head here we can see that there's several oil galleys where it goes into the head. We've got this main oil galley that runs diagonally across here that takes some of that oil and will lubricate this exhaust bearing over here. Then some of that oil will also split and lubricate the intake bearing over here. Now what's interesting here is we've also got oil that goes to a variable valve timing system to change the position of this cam gear. So how the variable timing system gets its oil is we've got a split that goes off here to the side where it goes through this filter which is located on the side here. Then it goes up to this oil control valve. Now this oil control valve is basically a solenoid that switches where oil can go in and come out the other side. Now here we've got the hole that lubricates the intake bearing and here we've got two more holes that control the variable valve timing system. Now this solenoid here will determine if oil is to flow between here and here and allow the variable timing gear, which is this guy over here, to fill up with oil thus changing the timing of the intake. And the exhaust bearing is lubricated by the oil supply over here. Some of that oil will go into this hole which goes down over here to the timing tensioner. Now the other camshaft bearings also need to be lubricated so to do that some of that oil is actually gone inside of the camshaft here and since this camshaft is pretty light and hollow it'll travel through the camshaft to each bearing where there's a hole where it can lubricate it. Now I'm going to chop open this camshaft to see what's inside. Well and there you have it, this is the camshaft cut in two, you can see that it is actually a hollow piece. Now you know when you fill your engine with oil, it first goes through the valve cover and then it will go down to the bottom here to where those drain holes are we saw on the bottom of the head. We've also got another drain over here that goes out to the timing side of the cover where it goes back down into the sump. So this here is the timing cover, that oil from the head will flow into here. This is where the tensioner will sit inside of here and you can see where the oil will flow into the hydraulic tensioner over here. Now this little hole here on the side of the block sprays a little bit of oil on the timing chain as it moves across lubricating it. This here is what the oil pan looks like. If you look closely inside of there you can see that's the drain plug. Now I'm going to cut this open to see what's inside. And this is pretty much what's inside of the drain pan. It's basically made of a thick stamped steel. You can see this here is where the drain plug is and it does sit a little bit higher than the bottom of the sump. So if your car is flat when you're changing your oil you're not necessarily getting all of this oil out unless if you jack up the front of your car.